Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Charles from the channel Books on Stereo, and I'm here to bring you another in conversation video. I have the Brie from In Love and Words. Hi, Brie, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing so well. Um, today was a topic that was actually inspired by you. I saw a video that you did on your channel maybe a couple months ago, and it's about um, I think it was your most anticipated reads. Mm -hmm. And you kind of said a little bit about how you kind of prefer reading backlist titles versus kind of focusing, hyper-focusing on new releases, which I think a lot of the book two, not book two, but book community is more focused on. Mm -hmm. So I thought this would be a great topic to talk about with you because I feel like that's like a dilemma that all people in the book community feel at some point, like in the future or right now or in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this, this is gonna be a really interesting conversation and yeah, I just can't wait can't wait to like hear your thoughts on this. So I guess the first question I want to ask is like what is your stance for there, especially those for, for those people who haven't seen that video? I'll link that down below for you guys. But what is your stance on backlist versus new releases? So I think first and foremost, I just want to say read what you want. <laughs> like what I, like if I'm not that you're asking for advice, but just for those watching, like read what you want. If you want to read a new release, read a new release. If you want to read backlist, read backlist. For me personally, because I read so many indie romances, they usually don't get announced until like very last minute. So it's not like some big thing that's happening where it's like months and months and months or like a year in advance. Like sometimes if an indie author is writing a series, you know that there's going to be a next installment, but you never know exactly when. So I feel like there's a lot less pressure and there's just not as much anticipation. So when it comes to that, I mean, I typically tend to get, lean more toward backlist because there's just so many backlist books that I want to read. And also just with romance in general and the romance like booktube community and that's where i get most of my recommendations i think we read a lot of backlist so a lot of the recommendations coming to, at me in videos are, are backlist titles and then also when people recommend books to me like in my comments or i have a recommendation form they're usually backlist titles it's very rare that it's a new book that comes out so i feel like just the places that i go to it's mostly backlist titles and i'm just i'm i'm not really looking at something like oh i think i just want to read backlist or i just want to read new releases i just want to read what sounds good <laughs> so if a new release sounds good then i'll read it but like i said i tend to lean more toward indie romances and they don't mm -hmm. typically have like these long new release dates and stuff like that like yeah. arcs and stuff go out but mm -hmm. i also don't read arcs really uh -huh. at all Really? Yeah, I'm not a big, I used to, okay. like, it, I think when I first got into, like, book blogging, especially, and, like, mm -hmm. NetGalley was all, like, exciting, and, like, if an yeah. author emailed me, it was exciting and everything, but now I'm just, I'm very much a mood reader, and I just have so many books that I want to read, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'll get, I'll get to the arcs eventually. The only time I'll really read an arc is if it's an author that I love, 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 and they ask me. I, I don't request mm -hmm. arcs request arts but if an author is like hey i'm coming out with a new book would you mind reading it and i love them i'm like heck yeah, yeah. <laughs> i will help you because i think they're they're yeah. kind of like there are three sides to this so you have the regular the average reader who doesn't really review books they just read like they want to and they're probably more influenced by new releases because publishers are putting it in front of their face yeah. but then you have booktubers and content creators bloggers everything like that books the grammars who maybe they're working with publishers or they're working with authors. Mm -hmm. And so they, and they also want to stay on top of things and be, I guess, relevant. Although I feel like mm -hmm. you can be relevant even if you read backlist books. True, so then, true. yeah. So then like you have them, so they, they probably maybe focus more on new releases. And then you, you have someone like me, who's kind of a little bit of both, who's a mood reader. Both world. But then you also, the other side of it is you have authors too. And I think authors, mm -hmm. you know, it's good for them. I, I can't speak as an author, but mm -hmm. it's probably good for them to have their newer books read. At least I think traditionally published authors, especially because that yeah. probably has to do with whether they get another contract. So mm -hmm. if their new release is sold well, but I guess, I mean, if you're reading their backlist that has to say something too. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, an interesting conundrum because I get it in the book, just in the book world, like in book community in general, always always been a huge focus on what's coming out next, mm -hmm. what's coming out next month, what are gonna, what's gonna be in like at the end of the year, best new releases, what's gonna be the best new thriller, best new romance that comes out, mm -hmm. and we're so much with like net galley getting arcs and all that mantra. You feel like you almost have to 
especially mm-hmm. when a new book hits, like the new, I'm going to, I said I wasn't going to say this, but the new Sarah J. Mass, <laughs> when that next book in the Crescent City series comes out, that's going to be like, you have to go and read it immediately and like be a part of that conversation. There's mm-hmm. a little bit of FOMO that you get if you're not like reading the book as soon as it drops or reading it very soon after the book drops. And you know, what, another you, part of that yeah. though, is that if, if, especially for a book like that, if I'm going, if I'm planning on reading a book, you know me, I like to go in completely blind. Mm-hmm. So if a bunch of people are reading it and talking about it, I want to read it just so that I don't get spoiled for it. It's kind of like the Spider-Man movie. Yeah. I was like, I want to see it right away so I don't get spoiled <laughs> for what happens. So that's I, that's another part of it. That's yeah. a good point. And just going back to your point about traditional publishers and how for a lot of authors, like they need those books to do well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I find a lot of times what happens is like we as people in the book community, we're like, okay, we want to support XYZ authors. So let me mm-hmm. buy all your new releases. Let me pre-order all these books. Mm-hmm. And then you probably never get to them within that year. <laughs> and then you automatically read them as backlist titles anyways, <laughs> exactly. because you just bought all the your favorite authors, like newest releases. Mm-hmm. And so like, you, that's a whole other problem. And then you just be, accumulate books on your TBR and then you feel overwhelmed we're not going down that train, but I would say for me, I kind of like flip flop back and forth. I'd like to be a part of like the new release conversation when there's like a new romance or a new thriller or something and something in those two genres that really is like popping off that everyone's talking about. Mm-hmm. I usually like to be a part of those conversations. So like that's part of the reason why I want to like read some new releases, mm-hmm. but also I can definitely get a little burnt out. Like you were kind of alluding a little bit trying to keep up with new releases, it costs a lot of money mm-hmm. to get new releases, especially if you're talking traditionally published mm-hmm. books. Like the audios are gonna be more expensive because they're usually gonna be full price. The books, if you want to get the book, you're probably gonna have to wait a little bit if you don't want to um, go out and purchase a copy yourself. And then even for the indie world, um, since I'm primarily an audiobook reader, mm-hmm. it actually serves me well to be a backlist. Yes. Reader, because not a ton of indie authors, except for like a couple handful, do like the day and date of simultaneous releases. Some authors, yeah. like it takes almost like half a year or Mary a year Zapata for the audio takes, job. Like, a year. It's been over a year, I think, since she released Hands Down. Like she released our All Words Lead Here, and we mm-hmm. still haven't gotten an audiobook for it. <laughs> but she's also an author who, even though I mostly listen to audiobooks and I prefer it, and I prefer especially her audiobooks, mm-hmm. I will read her ebook. I will read all 8,000 really? pages of those books <laughs> and love every second of it. So That's I will read it dedication. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, true dedication. Yeah, so like, I don't know where exactly I stand. I, I like to say mm-hmm. I try to be on the new releases because I think especially in all of the different book platforms besides, I would say TikTok. I think TikTok is a very different entity and how it's kind of influencing the book community at large. Mm -hmm. But for us, the YouTube, Instagram, like those are the places where publishers push like the new releases, the new books. So like, I don't, even if I haven't even, even even if I don't know what a romance is about that's coming out from like Berkeley or something, I've seen it like 20 different times Mm -hmm. on everyone's Instagram or someone's raving about it in a YouTube video. Mm-hmm. But then book talk, I kind of want to touch upon this a little bit more. It's kind of bringing back the backlist and making the mm-hmm. backlist more powerful. I remember Katie Roberts yeah. mentioned that her backlist is what actually like drives most of her earnings mm-hmm. and not so much her new releases right. because usually people don't have time to always keep up and read like the newest and latest from each of their favorite authors. So what do you think about the different platforms and how that kind of influences which camp you may be in. I I agree. I think I think for TikTok, like everyone always. I, okay, so I have to be honest. I don't watch Book Talk, and that is <laughs> same. I don't either. <laughs> like I purposely like if a Book Talk like comes up on my TikTok like for you page, I immediately scroll away. I'm like, don't give me any more suggestions. And it's not because I don't. I just like like the videos or anything. It's because I don't need more recommendations. <laughs> I'm like I'm just and then I'm like I'm also getting to get inspired to want to start a TikTok and I do not need another thing on my plate right now. I just like I it, I'm afraid of it because I'm I'm going to get sucked in and I don't want to get sucked in. But yeah, I think also and I think other people have talked about this too with TikTok, it's a younger audience and so they're mm-hmm. now just old enough to start reading a lot of these adult books. 
and mm -hmm. like getting out of middle grade in YA and stuff. So I think that's why a lot of the really, really old books like Evelyn Hugo and stuff is Achilles, Song of Achilles yeah. and stuff is starting to come back up. And like we read it what like five years ago. Five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but they are they were they were kids then. So they probably yeah. didn't have interest in that. So Yeah, I think that plays into like from what I know about TikTok, it's more about the immediate satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So from what I've heard from people who are like who do book talk is that it's not as satisfying to the person who's watching the TikTok if you recommend a book. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh no, the book doesn't actually come out for two months. Right. Versus they want it right away. already available because they want to pick it up and read it right away, which I think is interesting. That is interesting. That's true. And it's, yeah. you know, I mean, it, TikTok in itself, like as a rule, it's like what, a few seconds long, sometimes a minute, like minute long okay. TikToks. I'm like, oh my God, why is this the longest thing I've well, ever watched? <laughs> but I'll watch like a 45 minute booktube video and be like, I it think it's nothing. <laughs> But like TikTok and it's and that's the thing. I think it's like quick. It's like, hey, here's the steamiest romances I read. Boom, 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 boom. But on BookTube, it's like, here's a steamy romance and here's 15 minutes on why I liked it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's like really interesting what TikTok is doing. And it's kind of like really up and like really kind of like changing, I think, more readers to the backlist. Mm -hmm. So like authors that were popular, like Pen Penelope Douglas, like yeah. when people were raving about corrupt, I was like, Come on, or L. Kennedy, the off campus. I'm like, those are popular like years ago. <laughs> what year? Those are so, there's such old books now. Like, mm -hmm. romance is not the same when it was like five or six years ago. It's mm -hmm. so much different now. Mm -hmm. But that's what's driving the sales. Like, you see them in like bookstores now, like Ice Planet Barbarians. Right. It's like now put to buy a publisher. It has like right. a pretty so, non cringy and cover. I wonder, I wonder how it's effect because I remember seeing like I vaguely remember seeing tweets I think maybe Bridget Kemmer talked about it how important like pre-ordering and stuff is because that determines whether the next book in the series will come out because the publishers mm -hmm. will be like well if this book does well then we'll we'll extend your contract mm -hmm. or something but I wonder how TikTok and all the backlist reading is now affecting that because if someone's reading Bridget Kemmerer's backlist or Penelope De well whoever's traditionally published their backlist mm -hmm. And like those are getting really hyped, then maybe they will extend their contracts, even if maybe the newer books aren't doing as well. So I don't know. I don't, I'd be know. I'd be really interested to talk to an author and see how how that affects that, like a traditionally published mm -hmm. author. Because I think with indie authors, it doesn't like you're buying their books and their the income is coming. You know, it's mm -hmm. not about contracts. You get a bigger cut of the right. income because like you're your own publisher. Mm -hmm. Exactly. In a lot of those cases. Yeah, it's not so much about getting contracts and everything or whatever it's, I don't know what anything's called, but <laughs> it's not so much about that. It's just about, you know, the pages read in Kindle Unlimited kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what book they're reading as long as they're reading a book by you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's probably different for both. I guess like one of the things like why I'm always on the fence about whether I should focus on like, cause I like my, I like my backlist books. Mm -hmm. Cause I started a bunch of romance series I hate how romance has like so many freaking series, especially <laughs> when you go into the paranormal world. Oh my you know, gosh. Like, I did not sign up for like a 30 plus book series, so but long. yet here I am. Yeah. But on the other hand, like I love being able to find like a new release or a new author that's just debuting and like being able to shout them out and say like, hey, look at this amazing new book by this new author that that's just so came cool. out and Honestly, especially if you get them through TikTok, amazing things mm -hmm. can happen for these debut authors. Mm -hmm. So I so I feel like it's almost like a give and take. I think backlist is super important, but what do you do, for, especially for an author, if you don't have a strong backlist? Right, that's true. Like how do you, especially with TikTok and people wanting to already have like maybe three or four books to choose from, or you're just coming out with a book. Mm -hmm. So I, I just like wonder like how they straddle that difference from uh, author side. Right. But. I almost, I almost wonder, and I like, I'm relating this to being a booktuber and making videos. Mm -hmm. Like when you're just starting, one thing that I mentioned in my video where I was talking about like how to start a booktube channel was make a bunch of video, make like four or five videos. So you have those like, and don't worry about like promoting them or anything. And then make the, the booktube newbie tag, because then more people will look up that tag and then they find you, they get to go to your your channel and see the the videos you already made. So I wonder if it's similar for authors, like publish a few books, like keep your day job, publish a few books, and then like really hit it and try and like really market a book. That way you've like honed your craft a little bit and that mm -hmm. that book that you're really hitting and publishing or marketing, maybe that, I don't know, maybe that's how they do it now. And 
maybe I like, I don't know. I just yeah. feel like I just love finding going on Amazon. I'm like, who are the who are these yeah. random authors? Mm -hmm. But why do I love their books? But they have no audio. I'm like, dang you, indie I know, authors. The no audio. I'm like, dang you, how dare you make me read a 400 page book? Mm -hmm. And I like it. <laughs> how dare you, author? But also, I think it's interesting to talk from a creator's perspective, specifically since we're both on YouTube. Do you mm -hmm. ever feel that a little bit, especially when you when people ask like, what are your most anticipated books? What are some of your favorite new new releases of this year? Do you feel as a creator, or we can talk for creators at large, that pressure to at least keep like one solid foot in the new release game? So if like Marianne Zapata dropped out with a new book or XYZ author, mm -hmm. you're still covering those and still incorporating those into your channel. So I feel like my perspective is a little different because this is mm -hmm. such a hobby for me. It's not, it's never been something where I'm like looking to have a certain number. I'm not a numbers person. Like not, the numbers mm -hmm. don't bother me. It's more about my, my enjoyment of it. It's very selfish. <laughs> like I enjoy doing it. So I'm only ever going to make the, the videos I want to make. And I'm mm -hmm. only ever going to read the books I want to read unless it's mm -hmm. like, well, yeah, I, I, no matter what, I'm not going to read a book I don't want to read. I'm not a hate reader mm -hmm. either. So that it doesn't bother me at all. I'm like, I don't care about staying relevant or anything. I'm like, if you want to watch me, watch me, but this is what I read. And this is what I like to make. <laughs> like, I'm not going to like make a video just because it's a popular topic, mm -hmm. but I think there are people who care about the numbers and who want to make this a career and that's fine too. So mm -hmm. I think that's probably something that they have to think about. And I think that's why so many creators who care about that end up reading books that they don't necessarily like because like, yeah. they're popular. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I read a lot of books that are popular because I am such a follower. <laughs> Only that like, if, someone, if a lot of people are talking about a book and it sounds good, I'm like, oh my God, that sounds good. And I know myself and I know that I am not a unique person and I tend to like what a lot of people like. Like, I like the hating game. I love, I fell in love with it. It's my favorite thing. Like, all the, I love hypothesis. It's super hyped and I love it. Like, it's very rare that I don't like a hyped book, so. <laughs> that's that's I'm, I feel so lucky for you. Like that's amazing. Like I yeah, wish I like, any popular book. I'm like I I like walk into like. Mm. I mean, let me proceed with I think caution. A lot of are like if this is hyped. It's probably like my. I don't it's want probably to horrible. I am not that. I'm like I'm gonna love this. If everyone loves it, I'm gonna love it because it's. I do. I usually do too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's so great. basic. I'm like, here's some like, like pumpkin spice latte drink. <laughs> like in my Uggs. I don't know if Uggs are so popular. <laughs> I'm so no, no. Young. You have like some of the greatest days, like especially with your backlist picks. I'm like, I never heard of like half the books that you pick on. I'm like, what is this? Like, I never heard of this. What is this? I was like, okay, let me write this down so like I may get to it. Mm -hmm. I may. In five years. <laughs> That's my lead time with like recommendations. You have to wait a certain mm -hmm. amount of period of time, especially if it has no audio. Mm -hmm. If it has no audio, you're at the you're at the end of the list. You're at the end of the it's list. That, that gets it's for real. That gets bumped all the way down. There are some books that are out that like a lot of people have been loving, and I'm like, I want to read it because I, I have a feeling I'll like it. But there's no audio, and I'm like, oh. just be in the author's DMs like me. <laughs> <laughs> I see here's here's the thing and this might be another a whole other topic but I know that audiobooks are so expensive to produce especially for an indie author and narrators deserve to get paid a lot of money mm -hmm. because they're spending a lot of freaking time doing it so it's it's such it's so hard because I know there are some authors who are amazing who don't have audiobooks and I can't I can't even blame them because it's so expensive yeah. but and like if you get if you get the wrong narrator it'll just ruin everything so yeah that's true that's, that's true hard. that's yeah, true like, i get um, it but also i'm probably not going to read your book unless i really really like you or it's really really yeah. like i can't help myself or if it's short mm -hmm. so but i definitely feel especially with audiobooks becoming more and more popular mm -hmm. i think you're starting to see like a divide in the readership for authors mm -hmm. like i know there's some people who only listen to audiobooks and will ignore anything else that doesn't have an audiobook and they will only stay in that audiobook realm and they'll only support and like find new authors that drop audiobooks mm -hmm. and then you have the other side with like some people who will never listen to an audiobook they'd like actually sitting down and reading the page mm -hmm. and especially when you factor in the whole new release versus backlist that can depending on what type of reader you are especially if you're an audiobook listener in the indie space Mm -hmm. It kind of makes you a backlist reader because most authors, 
like we said, like I said earlier, only re- don't actually release them, or even they don't even announce that the audio is coming. So it could be like right. half a year, and like you still don't, like is the audio going to drop at some point? Like, right. are they, why, like why is there they, even going to be one? Like, is there going to be an audio? Mm-hmm. And so, like, I guess, like, for me, like, being, especially being in the romance, reading a lot of indie romance, that's what kind of pushed me over to becoming more of, like, an ebook and physical reader because mm-hmm. there's so many good books. And, like, I I can't wait, yeah. for, like, a, yeah. two years for the mm-hmm. audio to drop. Or if it, or if it, it may not it may not even drop, mm-hmm. depending on because it's so expensive. But I think that's an interesting point, too. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how that changes with TikTok. Are people reading more? Like reading more physically, or is it more audio? I, I never know what's what, what's one of the driving. I think it's like ebook and physical sales. I think so because I I'm going by my nieces who are like prime TikTok age right now. They're like 18, 19, 20. Yeah. and they they physically read books. And because I know my one niece loves to annotate, they'll physic really? they like to buy the physical books and read them and annotate them. They're not audiobook readers. Which is That's crazy. I know, but like from an accessibility standpoint too. I mm-hmm. mean, like let's let's try as hard as we can to get some audiobooks mm-hmm. because as someone who mm-hmm. cannot physically read for long periods of time because of my eye issues and everything, I mm-hmm. really appreciate. And I know a lot of people also who really really depend on those audiobooks, and it's such a different experience than having like text to speak te- text to speech or Alexa read it to you. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Especially um, if you have KU or you have a good local library or you have like Hoopla, not Hoopla. Yeah. Hoopla is good for audiobooks, but um, getting Libby. the print book is usually, or Libby, it, mm-hmm. getting the ebook is usually way easier. Mm-hmm. Or a physical book is usually way easier than to get like an audiobook copy mm-hmm. of a book, unless it's like a big release. And like, of course, multiple libraries will buy copies. But other than that, in like, terms of accessibility, mm-hmm. like physically reading is the easiest yeah. to get your hands on. But it's interesting, like that's becoming more of like the default, yeah. more because of TikTok. Like mm-hmm. I see a lot of authors who are kind of exploding in popularity, mm-hmm. and they have no audiobooks. I'm like, right. what is? But then they get audiobooks because because they have and the publicity, think that's what and then they can do simultaneous releases. Right. So I'm like, I'm, like, I'm trying to just like just go audio first. Forget the I print. Know. Just go audio first. Like this better longevity, but. Mm-hmm. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's it's very likely a financial thing. They probably want to like make sure because I, I who did I talk? I talked to an author who I had asked about audiobooks, and they said that there's like no return on investment with audiobooks. Like it's really hard for them to earn back the money mm-hmm. that they spend, and like especially in a timely manner. So th- if that's like coming out of their pocket to yeah. make an audiobook, which is why I'm so grateful, especially indie authors like with books that aren't as popular. I'm like, the, the fact that you came out with an audiobook is huge to me that you cared enough to like mm-hmm. invest in that because, you know, I, I think maybe it was Evie Mitchell who I was talking to because mm-hmm. Evie Mitchell has, her her books are short and, you know, she, she doesn't have a huge following on Instagram. She's kind of like up and coming. She's finally getting some traction, thank goodness. But I think she she makes it a point to get audiobooks out, and I'm pretty sure she doesn't get a good return on investment, at least not yet, not until. Yeah. She, but accessibility is very it. big. It's a very big thing for yeah. her, and it matters to her. And so I'm just like I appreciate those of you who are able to. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing when authors um, prioritize and realize that there's an audience mm-hmm. that wants those books, especially mm-hmm. if you want to like stay on the new release site, but you need those audios. Like, text-to-speech is a good replacement, Mm -hmm. but ask anyone listening to a whole book on text-to-speech, it gets really old really, really quickly because it's Mm -hmm. all monotone. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's great if you can, but, like, yeah, you you have to struggle bust your way through if you don't have an audio book and you want one (laughs) and you're doing text-to-speech. Have you noticed that Alexa doesn't say abs? She says ABS. Yes. <laughs> it's just like Alexa reading a steam easy. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> this is so robotic. Alexa, like Alexa's better than tech. It goes like text to speech, then Alexa, and then audiobook. Because Alexa yeah. try like they, I, you can tell there's some sort of programming in there that tries to get the emphasis, but sometimes it gets it wrong and it's awkward. Like, <laughs> like she'll get like a breathy voice sometimes. I'm like, why? <laughs> it's so weird. It's in the wrong place. 
but I like how I, this was inevitable that we would start talking about audiobooks because it's you and me. Yes. <laughs> like we're supposed to talk about backlist, but it, it's inevitable that we start talking about. Well, it's like um, it's it's definitely relevant because, like we said earlier, um, getting backlist, especially for audiobook reader, you're almost always backlist. Yep. Like occasionally for like a few services, like now you're starting to see more in the indie romance, like independent mm -hmm. production companies mm -hmm. that are making it more cost effective yeah or for especially for newer authors to get high quality audios mm -hmm. out there and like still retain all their rights and like actually make some good money off their audiobooks mm -hmm. um but it is still making it makes you almost into a backlist reader yeah. like any popular book you're just like okay the mm -hmm. audiobook's probably going to drop probably about six months to maybe a year mm -hmm. And then you're just automatically a backlist reader. But then on the other hand, you have for the traditionally published side, you're completely fine usually, but right. not in all cases. Because well, I noticed with some of the smaller where it publishers. Shows up on the services too. Like whether Hoopla has a decent amount of backlist. I think Scribd is pretty good about having new yeah. books. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it just it depends on the services too. To wrap us up, any tips or tricks if someone's kind of like deciding other whether they should focus on new releases versus back backlist titles mm -hmm. or should they just say like whatever read whatever you want i mean i think you know forget I everyone read, else <laughs> yeah, read what you want but <laughs> i feel like there's a caveat for everything read what mm -hmm. you want if you're a reader just read what you want read what sounds good but i think if you're a creator and you really want to be on top of everything then then read those new releases mm -hmm. but i think go in with the understanding that you know that means that you're probably going to see some books that are backlist that you're going to have to put to the wayside and maybe read some books that you're not going to love as much because mm -hmm. you're giving it like you know you feel like you have to promote it but also i think you need some people who who do that for the authors to promote their books like yeah. you if if everyone just read backlists then where would that put there the, would be no new releases exactly like the authors need that they need the people the yeah. hype people and the like street crew and stuff so mm -hmm. i mean what do what you want <laughs> i'm the worst <laughs> no that's like the best I'm very advice like, just, just do what you just read what you want to read i think mm -hmm. i would always say strive for a healthy balance and everything mm -hmm. new releases true. versus backlist because, mm -hmm. like we are, you already mentioned, like if you if everyone just read backlist because of TikTok, right? No one would read the new releases, so most of the authors' of the new releases would flop. Right. But then a year later, they may be doing well because now they're backlist. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the case, anyways, especially in the book community. Like you buy the ebook or audiobook or physical book, mm -hmm. especially if it's a new release, and it usually sits. Unless right. it's like a book that we like really, 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 really want to read. It's rare. Yeah, it's rare. So like, like you're I, already in that balance part. I try to like pre-order books, even if I know I'm not going to read them. There is, I think I could count on one hand how many authors that I will read the book the day it comes out. So like, like top two, Lauren Rowe and Mariana Zapata are like the only ones I will read the day it comes out. Everyone else, I'll, I'll wait a little while. There's some authors that mm -hmm. I'll wait like maybe a week or two. I'll finish up whatever book I'm reading now. But like the second Mariana is if I will drop everything <laughs> and read her book. Same thing with Lauren Rowe. Couple authors, I'll finish up my TBR and then I'll read their books. But then most authors, like I'll pre-order it to support them, but then I probably won't read it for like <laughs> years. <laughs> and thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll catch you guys with a brand new video. Bye everyone. <laughs>